Uh, and uh, a guy that uh, last week we had a, a, a connection that did work well. Every, all the other connections that day all worked great. But we got him on as rapidly as we could. I think that was Friday, and here we are back on Monday, and he's on for 45 minutes at 12.15. David Lee Morgan, author David Lee Morgan, now a school teacher at Washington High School. He's been a journalist for a long, long time. Wrote a tremendous, really good book. A really, I think the first book written about LeBron James was written by David Lee Morgan. When he was just yet coming out of high school, he might have still been in high school or just beyond it uh, when his original book came out. And David Lee is an excellent writer, a good guy, a smart guy. And we're going to give him all 45 minutes. We're going to whet our appetites for this new book coming out later this summer, I believe. He'll give us the, the dates, uh, et cetera, when it'll be out, when he can get it on Kindle, when he can get it in hard copy. 13 minutes after 12 o'clock, ESPN on 90, the Ray Jeske Show. Coming up in just a few moments, conversation with author David Lee Morgan. And tomorrow at just about this time, a little bit later at about 12.30, CEO of the Millwood Corporation, Steve Miller, will be with us to talk about how his company is navigating and doing a whole lot more than just surviving uh, during this coronavirus event that we are all uh, participating in, whether we wanted to or not. Uh, but uh, CEO Steve Miller, how they are thriving in the midst of it. Katie Grimes coming up later in the week to talk about as a brand-new rookie teacher in the school system of Cleveland, what it was like uh, breaking the news and, and, and et cetera with their kids and, and how she has done it as a brand-new, freshly minted school teacher. Uh, 13 minutes after 12, ESPN 990. And again, coming up in just a little bit, Steve, uh, rather David Lee Morgan. Today's show is brought to us by the Home Appliance Company, Advanced Industrial Roofing, A.A. Hammersmith Insurance, and Dollar Bank with Vice President Mike Brenner. We ready to go? And without any further ado, we now go to David Lee Morgan here on the Ray Jansky Show, ESPN and Naughty. David Lee, how are you? Hey, Ray. How are you, sir? I apologize for last week. I don't know what was going on, but I'm glad I'm back. Ooh, you sound very good this time, man. We're glad you're back, too. David Lee, just picking up where we were a week ago, just a, a kid who grew up in Warren, Ohio, Warren Harding High School, right? Yes, sir. Warren G. Harding. I was a Panther, though, back then. We were still the Panthers. The Panthers back in the day. So Western Reserve was still in existence. Yeah, that was our rival. You know, we were in the Steel Valley Conference, so that was a big conference there with Boardman and Fitch and Howland and the Niles. And then we, who'd you have? We had, um, oh, um, uh, Mooney and Ursland, and then you wow. have Warren Harding and Warren Western Reserve. So it was a, it was a really, uh, you know, competitive conference. Gosh, that must have been intense. Uh, what year did Reserve get created? Was that late 60s? Uh, no, well, you know what? I think 1970. I, I'm not sure. I think it was that the first year was 1970. Well, a great friend of mine, uh, she's the wife of another great friend of mine, uh, was one of the first classes at Reserve. And a guy that was in my wedding was a running back for Reserve, graduated uh, back in, uh, was, a, was a teammate of Brian Cross's. Back in oh, like Brian nineteen, Cross, yeah, nine, yeah. class of seventy four. Yeah, he, he was down at um, Grove City at some point, wasn't he? At McKinley, he was at Grove City, then McKinley, then went back down to uh, Olentangy Orange, yeah, and coached there. And uh, but uh, yeah, but they were teammates back in the day. Jerry Albany. Do you remember the name from the, the person from Warren? Jerry Albany was the running back from Warren. Albany, uh, yeah, I know. I'm Mark Albany. I know a lot of those families there. Yeah. So anyhow, so you grew up there. You uh, you majored in journalism or in something else? Some sports writer, no, some writers started the, somewhere else. Well, I minored in journalism because um, at Youngstown State they didn't have a, 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 a journalism major. So um, my my major was professional. I have a bachelor's in professional writing and editing, which actually I'm glad I'm glad I went that route because it was through the English department. So, you know, I had to read so much Shakespeare and, you know, 13th and 19th century literature, all of that stuff. So uh -huh. I'm glad I did it that way. But um, I did minor in journalism. So did you think you were going to be like a technical writer or somebody who worked for corporations? No, Originally, no, not or? at all, but that's just the way that the program was set up. I always wanted to be, you know what, Ray, I always wanted to be like um, Oscar Madison. 
like uh, you know, grow, <laughs> the ad growing couple. up. I, I I mean I watched those shows like yeah. that girl and and Oscar Madison. You know the Odd Couple. I've watched all of those. So. <laughs> Um, I loved have you know watching Oscar Madison with that cap on backwards and yeah. his cigar, and then he'd rip that copy out of his typewriter and give it to Laverne, and she would run it down to the. That's what I wanted to do. And then you'd go home and give Felix a hard time. <laughs> exactly, he'd clean up the place. But yeah, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to do. But but honestly, um, I started out as a criminal justice major at YSU, and then halfway through. I, I I always liked to write, didn't know it, and then I kind of switched majors, and then that's when you know everything took off. Did you have a teacher in high school or somebody that that was like sparked you that you? That's when you learned to love writing, even though you didn't. Well, switch I had later? an English t- teacher, Mrs. Kindleberger, and she was an English teacher, but she was also a, a really really strong supporter of our athletics, hmm. and I, I I I that's you know that's maybe when I felt like I you know, enjoyed English and writing, yeah. but I always liked to write, and but I never thought it would be a career until I got to YSU and, and started with uh, the school newspaper, the Jam Bar, mm. and I started covering YSU athletics, um, and then I became the correspondent for the Warren Tribune because they didn't have anybody covering YSU athletics while Jim Trestle was there, and I became good friends with Coach Trestle, who's now a mentor of mine, and he wrote the foreword to this book, and we did a book together before. But that's how the career started. I just yeah. started writing for the school newspaper, and then the Warren Tribune. I got to cover all of the national championships, that, you know, that YSU played in. And then, so you, you know, when I left YSU, I'd already had a lot of experience. Yeah, uh, Coach Tress was on this show last week. President Tressel uh, last Wednesday was on with us. Yep. Did a yeah, great job. Yeah, I, I, I slip up in my phone. I have President Tressel, but when I call him, it's hey, Coach Tressel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, wow! So you were there. You were writing for the the newspaper there at YSU in the yeah, 80s, early ball, yeah. 80s. Well, 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 I was there. I played baseball at YSU for a year. I was on the team two years. Um, I, I, I hate to say it, but I redshirted my first year, and then the second year, some things happened, and I, I didn't finish the season. Yeah. But um, I was there in the mid eighties and then toward the end of the eighties and into the nineties is when I started when I changed my major. So um, I was there, you know, I covered the uh, ninety one national championship in Statesboro, Georgia, ninety two covered that one, ninety three covered that one, ninety four covered that one, covered the one in ninety seven in Chattanooga when we beat McNeese State. So I got all wow. that experience and yeah. and throughout that uh, you know Throughout that experience, I became really close with Coach Tressel because a lot of my roommates were football players. So when he first came on campus, he would come to our apartment and rally some of his seniors behind him because he was in his first year. Mm. And then he just kind of pulled me in with him. So I just I never played it down for him, but became really good friends with him. Uh, that is fascinating. So you're there, and from there you jumped to the Beacon Journal. Was that the next step, or was there something in between? Well, no, I was all around the place. I, I worked in Raleigh, North Carolina for the News and Observer for a summer, and then when I came back, um, I, I worked full-time at the Vindicator, and then I went from there to the Beacon Journal. But I had a short stop. I was a TV reporter for Channel 33, but I didn't like broadcast. Hmm. So um, the Beacon hired me, and I was there for 15 years, and that's, uh, that's where uh, yeah. I did most of my, my good writing. Well, that's when I connected with you, and of course, you wrote your first book. Right? Was the book about LeBron, or was that not your first book? I was no, no, no. That, that was the first one, LeBron James: The Rise of a Star. Um, you know, I started covering him about eighth grade, and then I just covered him all through high school. But here's an interesting story, Ray. Is so yeah. his senior year, I was covering the Cavs. I was the Cavs beat writer, and that's the year they were terrible. I think seventeen and sixty-five, and that's the <laughs> year that they were able to pick LeBron first. So. Um, after about maybe the first couple weeks of the Cavs season, they said, hey, David, you know, we're not going to have you go on the road with the Cavs. Just cover all the home games. But we want you to go on the road with St. V. Hmm. So so I went to L.A. when they played at UCLA. Yep. Um, I went to the Greensboro Coliseum, um, the Palestra in Philly. You know, so I just yep. followed them around. And that's when I came up with the idea. Actually, it was a year before that I decided to come up 
with the idea to cover LeBron and I mean write a book about LeBron because it was just such an incredible experience that I knew would never happen again. So you and Brian Windhorst and Terry Pluto were all in the same room at that point. In oh, time. for sure, yeah, yeah. Terry, um, yeah, Brian. Brian, it's funny. Brian used to be a. Um, he used to. Uh, work agate and when we would call stories in we'd be like hey brian you know uh, we, we sent our story in and he'd be we called him scoop and we'd be, he'd be like yeah we got it if we need anything we'll let you know and and now he's on espn wow see he didn't hate broadcasting and and and, and i'm just saying so anyhow no well he's great at what he does too you know <laughs> he really is <laughs> uh fascinating so what a, what a time man to just you know i i live a couple of miles i i can i can jog to st v's you know in in if I'm in good shape in 15 minutes, yeah. 18 minutes, and, uh, uh, you know, to just happen there. Because nobody significant ever grows up around here, and all of a sudden that happened. You know, all the Michael Jordans of the world lived somewhere else, yeah. and then that happened in our backyard. Uh, how amazing. That's a great point. You know, that's what I used to, you know, when I would go on radio or TV, I would tell people, you know, before that, you know, the epicenter of basketball was always, and high school basketball was always like New York, New Jersey, Florida, you know, Texas yeah. somewhere. And it was right here in Northeast Ohio for so many years. Crazy, man. So you and I were probably at a ton of the same events, um, right oh, through yeah. all the LeBron years, right through. I remember being at St. V's when he won his first MVP, you know, when they presented it there. Yeah. And uh, whatever that was, he was 24. It was after his sixth year. Uh, interesting. So David Lee Morgan with us. David Lee, you then at some point transitioned to being an English teacher. Yes. At Masson Washington High School, uh, how many years ago was that? It's not been many, but when was that? No, this is my fourth year. So I started here in 2016. So um, this is my fourth year teaching. How did that happen? Well, I just, I, you know, I was actually working at YSU for Coach Tressel in the Foundation Department, raising money for scholarships and and things like that. But I just that wasn't me. I didn't like it. So. As I was working there, I found out how I could get uh, alternative licensure. You know, it's a path where, you know, you earn a teaching license like, you know, an education major. Yeah. Um, but it took a long time. So I started doing that and finished everything I needed to finish. And um, I decided, you know, when I applied at schools, whatever school hired me for or offered first, I would take it. And it's ironic that Maslin was the first school that, offered and i accepted wow uh fortuitous for us at least here in tiger town so uh very very good david lee i tell you what we'll take a commercial time out and when we come back uh, i think we've caught up a little bit on your background and and where uh, your frame of reference was developed and so on as you now come to the city of Maslin as a teacher in the school system and uh, the preparation starts getting inside of you, I guess, uh, uh, like a coronavirus. It starts growing inside of you uh, to, to get ready to write this book that had to be written last fall. And what a what a good what a great window of time for you to be on this spot, you know? Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it was. It really is. This may have been the greatest past three years, uh, certainly in the playoff era uh, of Tiger football. Uh, very well, yeah, yeah. Probably has been. David Lee, you come to Maslin. Four years ago to be an educator, were you always teaching English, and was it always the 10th grade? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I've been the 10th grade um, general English teacher since since I got here. And for the last, what, maybe two and a half years, uh, I became the um, journalism instructor. So we have a, a website. It's called 10ohio.com or Tiger Eye News. So I am the advisor for that. So we've got some great kids who are interested in journalism. So I help support them and and help get them going into uh, a field if they want to get into it. But if not, they just, you know, have fun writing, you know, have yeah. fun writing in an entertaining way. Uh, is this, I know there's a very uh, ambitious teleproductions department. Uh, did you guys produce sort of a, a newsletter or a newspaper also or uh, a, no, no, something well, like that? We just, you know, we had a journalism program, and we just kind of pushed it out to the next level. So it's obviously we don't have a print um, version, but you know we we kind of went bare bone and then um, set up our website. So it's an online newspaper. Uh, it's a really great site. Um, hmm. if, if you don't mind me plugging, it's cool. Ten no. Ohio T E N Ohio dot com, and so it's our school newspaper. And we've got kids that you know write feature stories, sports stories, news stories, uh, opinion, student life, all of that. So you know if people want to get a look at what we're doing, um, you know they can go to Ten Ohio dot com. 10ohio.com, uh, the website for the journalism program at Washington High School. Who does a 10th grade English teacher 
journalism instructor, who's your direct report? Is it right to the principal, or, or who, who are you accountable to? Yeah, yeah, it's it's Mrs. Parr. She uh, and um, she, you know, she's our principal. She's um, a, a great support um, person, and we also, you know, we we report to Mr. Lottenschlager, who's our principal. But they've been so they've been amazing for us. I mean, they've been so supportive, and they know that the kids love what they're doing. They know I love what I'm doing. So it, it's been perfect and great support. Are you aware of any kids who've gone on to specifically major in journalism uh, in college? Yeah, well, well, last year was my full year. So uh, we had one kid, Brandon Sand, who played baseball, actually, and he's at OU, and he's majoring in journalism. We had a smaller staff last year, a little bit bigger this year. This year. Um, but um, we do have one student who is interested, Katie Snodgrass. She's going to Ohio University and she plans on majoring in journalism. So we, we hope to build this up and, yeah. and get kids to understand how important journalism is and the fourth estate is, and you, you know how important it is. Boy, uh, what a great program, OU. And, uh, of course, Kent likes to think that they have a great program in journalism, so you, you've got it around right. here locally. Uh, you begin to coach the football team, running backs coach. Uh, describe your relationship with Coach Nate Moore, where it began, when it began, how it's grown, and at what point did he say, David Lee, uh, I want you on my staff? Because I heard you tell well, a story Moore, when your phone rang and you, you thought it was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Coach Moore is a great – I mean, it, it's it's hard to explain. People see him out on the field and think that maybe he's just – because he's a big guy and, you yeah. know, bearded, you know. But Coach Moore is a very, very sensitive um, – he, he's a really good-hearted guy. I mean, I really enjoyed uh, being on his staff. And how this all came about, it was interesting because the first year or two um, – I just wanted to help out in any way that I could. So I was the uh, announcer for basketball. Um, and then um, I coached um, with Spike, uh, Spike um, Ridgely um, baseball. I was a JV coach for two years. And then this past year, uh, or the year before, I coached freshman basketball with uh, Coach Kale Miller, who's our wide receiver coach. So, you know, I just kind of volunteered that way. But Last last July, no, maybe it was August, actually, I get a phone call from Nate Moore, and I thought he butt-dialed me. So I answered <laughs> and said, oh, Coach Moore, I think you butt-dialed me. He said, no, I called you. I said, hey, what's going on? And he said, hey, um, we need a – no, he said, what do you think about coaching the running backs? And I said, you mean varsity? He said, yeah, yeah, we need a varsity running backs coach, and the kids know you, they like you. And that's how it all started. Just wow. out of the blue, last minute. It was actually the day before our first scrimmage against Avon. Hmm. Wow! And that's how it all started. Did you feel com- Did you feel like you were over your head, or because that's a lot of pressure, man? The Massive yeah, Tiger. No, that's a great. That, that's that's part of the story. That, that's right? a college. Because, that, uh, you David, know, yeah. here I am. I mean, I I've never coached. Football, I played football, basketball, and baseball uh, all the way up until ninth, well, football up until ninth grade, and then I concentrated on baseball and basketball. So I'd never coached high school football, um, and then let alone at a program, you know, obviously at Maslin. So I, the, the biggest challenge was trying to learn as much as I could and not feel like I was not doing my job at a program like Maslin, you know, so it was very challenging um, to understand what they were looking for, um, learn plays, which it, I, it took me the whole year to figure out what we were really doing. So it was very, very, very challenging. Tell us the story, David Lee, uh, the Zion story. He was uh, the heir apparent at running back, uh, having been a, a, a brilliant uh, backup the previous year to Ohio, uh, Maslin's all-time most prolific runner, and he's going to be the guy, and then all of a sudden a hot shot, Terrence Keyes Jr. from St. Bees is moving in. Uh, tell that story. It's, it's a wonderful story. Yeah, that was an interesting story because I had Zion um, as a sophomore in my English class. So Zion, he's a really great, lighthearted kid, but I remember um, his junior year, toward it, it, actually around this time this year, he came into my room and he said, hey, Coach Morgan, he was real sad and somber. I said, hey, what's, what's wrong with you? He said, Oh, uh, I heard um, we're getting a new running back. Uh, a kid's transferring from St. V. He's leaving Akron, and he's moving to Maslin. And he was just so down for, uh, I, I would say, two or three or four days. And I kept saying, Zion, I said, listen, you can't worry about anything that's out of your control like that. You know, 
Coach Moore, they're not, they're not going to just throw you under the bus. You've worked too hard in this program, and you've worked too long, and we know what you could do. Um, if somebody is transferring here, you can't help that, but we're going to need you to stay positive and work with whoever comes in here because if he's good enough, we're going to need you, and, and we're going to need you to do so many other things, so just don't worry about it. And the great thing about Zion is after a while, um, he kind of snapped out of it. And, and if you look at it, he was our MVP of the season. He was our offensive MVP player of, yeah. of, the, of, the, of the season. And it's because he did so many things for us. He could block. Uh, he could catch out of the backfield. I mean, he was a strong runner. Uh, he was dependable, didn't turn the ball over too many times. So he was a great he was a great guy once he decided that, hey, I can be a better person and, and do a lot more for the team with Terrence Keyes being there. Uh, both years, his junior and senior year, the way he had big postseason performances, you know, that were so clutch, uh, it's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, how, and, and it was because, you know, he was always an upbeat, hard worker. And I think he understood his role once Terrence got here because, you know, Terrence was going to be our star running back, and he's another great story. He's a great kid. And, you know, he came here just wanting to work hard and, and, and earn a spot, and he did. But at the same time, him and, and Zion became really good friends. I mean, they, they competed, but it was a fun competition. I mean, the practices were awesome because they would push each other. The whole running backs crew, they would push each other in a fun way in a competitive way that you saw translate onto the field. We're talking with David Lee Morgan. Does Is the Zion Pfeiffer story, is that just uh, part of some other story, or does it get its own chapter? Can you tell, no, tell no, us no, about no, the it's construction? Part of, it's part of the chapter. You know, the, uh, another challenge, you know, Ray, was the fact that um, when, I, when I decided to write the book, I mean, when I accepted the job, I knew it was just going to be one year because – these coaches here are some of the hardest working coaches I've ever seen. Um, you know, it's, it's 365, it's 24 seven. So I knew I wouldn't be able to do that. So when I first started and decided, you know, I was going to come up with a book idea, I said, you know what, I'm going to chronicle this every day. Mm. Um, this is a unique experience because, you know, how many guys can come off the street and, and yeah. become a running backs coach at Maslin that has a background as a writer and as an author. So the challenge for me was to understand that my job was to be the running backs coach, but also take notes and, and, and keep a, a, a journal of what was going on every day so that when I was ready to write the book, I had you know my reference and everything was there for me. So that was the biggest challenge. Did you have like a role model book? Uh, you know, I think it Buzz's book uh, about uh, Texas football, uh, the Permian Panthers, and that kind of thing. Was there anything in mind that, that kind of corroborated, in your mind, that the, the viability of such a book that would, you yeah, know, would, it, that would it, have a market beyond? In some beyond. ways, you know, you know, Friday Night Lights, you know, that, that was in the back of my mind. But I was just thinking to myself, when I wrote the LeBron book, that book did so well, obviously because LeBron was a worldwide phenomenon, but – that book did so well because I was there every day. Yeah. I saw all, I saw everything. I saw the practices every day with Coach Dambrot and with Coach Drew. I saw the controversy with the Hummer and the jersey. <laughs> so, so my reference and my perspective was going to be a lot different than somebody else's. So in the same case with this book, I mean, other people have written books about high school football, but but I'm in practice every day, yeah. so my perspective just has to be what I see and the conversations that I hear and um, the ups and downs and the conflicts and the, you know, the, rise and the, the, the rising action and, and all of that, the conflict that the kids were going through on the field and off the field. So that's what I was focused on, was just writing those stories and what I saw every day on the field, at practice and games, and if they trans and if they transferred into the classroom, yeah. And so that's all I that's all I was concerned with was making sure I wrote what I saw and making it a perspective that most people don't get. You know, you think of Desert Storm and and the 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 term embedded journalist, 
uh, you were an embedded journalist. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and that's, it's funny, that was one of the titles that was in the back of my mind when, as I was writing this, because that's what I felt like. I felt like I was embedded. Um, and it almost felt like, I don't want to say an imposter of a coach, but I felt like I was doing two duties. You know, I was trying to write a book, and I was trying to write stories without ma- but I had to make sure that I wasn't trying to manufacture yeah, yeah. conversations to fit what I was trying to write. It had to be real and genuine. And so that was kind of easy because I just I just sat back and watched everything. And everything, you know, the stories played out right in front of me. Mm-hmm. I just needed to make sure that I, I journaled it. David Lee Morgan, running backs coach for the Masson Tigers with us. David Lee, uh, title of the book? It is called 15 for 15, the Maslin Tigers, and if people want to order it, uh, they can go online um, and go to 15for15book.com. Um, the book will be out September 8th. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. The stories are great. Um, great stories about the Maslin mystique yeah. and, and the arrogance that people think that Maslin people have. And is it intentional? Yeah, maybe. Is it something that's just part of what they think this community is all about yes so those are those are some of the stories that that people will read and i think they'll they'll really 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 enjoy it david lee can you stick with us for one more segment absolutely we'll be right back with author david lee morgan we'll get a a couple of those stories i'm sure he'll sneak a few of them out to us little sneak preview of some of the inside dope stories behind the stories perhaps david lee morgan next continues 15 for 15 the mass and tigers guest today Author David Lee Morgan on the Ray Jensky Show, the book 15 for 15. Am I, is that just a partial title, David Lee, or is that the whole title? Uh, it's a, it's a, well, it's, it's part of the title. It's called, um, 15 for 15, and then the subtitle is The Maslin Tigers. And it's, it's all, Ray, it's all based on, um, the whole concept of the 15 for 15. You've probably seen, you know, at the end of every game, uh, our, our guys and cheerleaders and who, whomever else is on the sideline, they'll come over and do, uh, 15 push-ups. I got to get Ellery and, Moore doing that in the press box. 15 push-ups. Ellery, go down and give us 15. You know, we're really? Start, yes, yes. You need to have him start doing that. Yeah. And, <laughs> well, that started with uh, that started uh, uh, a couple years ago with Coach J.P. Simon, and um, he had told me that he, it's in the book. He tells me the story about how um, a couple years ago they started doing that in January when they start when they start up, and it symbolizes you know you have to win 15 games. So. As that carried over into the preseason, um, you know, they had, they had just, they started doing it in January. So one of the players said, Hey coach, you know, we've been doing this since January. We don't want to stop just because the season has started. Why don't we start, why don't we just continue to do this after, after every game? So last year it, it st- started and, and because we went so deep into the playoffs and to the state championship, it picked up even more this year. So that was one of the things that, um, you know, was so important. And it was the whole mantra, uh, you know, of, of what we were trying to do is win a state championship. And it took 15, you know, 15 games. And it's funny because you would hear the crowd out, you know, every time yeah. we would go down one, two, the crowd was, you know, followers. They'd stay, be- you know, they wouldn't leave. They would stay and, and kind of uh, do the count with us. So it, it became really symbolic for us. The publisher is whom? I'm sorry? The publisher of the book is who? Oh, the publisher is Fayetteville Mafia Press. Um, they're out of Columbus, and it's it's interesting. Um, one, There's two gentlemen, one who lives in New York and one lives in Columbus. Uh, but Scott Ryan, he is a Maslin graduate. I mean, he has season tickets, and that's how this whole thing started, because he heard me on a podcast talking about a book that I was writing. Huh. And about maybe 10 minutes later, he called me. He, he told me he looked me up. Um, on the school website, called me and said, "We want to publish your book." Wow! And I think we were. I think this was right before the Hoban game. Hmm. So um, you know, I hadn't finished, and you know, we still had games to play, but they wanted to publish it, and I'm very grateful to them. The book is coming out how soon? And is it there going to be a Kindle release early or something like that first online or? 
Well, yeah, I think there is. Um, we're, we're trying to set up. We don't know because of the situation that's going on now. We were, um, Our plan was to have a panel and a book release or a book signing at the Lincoln Theater um, sometime in August right before the season starts. But, you know, with um, yeah. the situation that's going on right now, we're not sure. But the book will be released um, September 8th, so people can buy it online. Um, like I said, they could go to 15for15book.com now and order it. It's also on Amazon, but uh, if you want to buy it now, you can go to 15for15book.com. 15for15book.com, folks. Uh, Jim Trestle, the forward, is that right? Yeah, Coach Trestle wrote the forward. He was the first one that I thought of when I came up with the book idea because, you know, his dad coached at Maslin, Lee Trestle. Yeah. And, uh, matter of fact, when I first started teaching here um, in the fall of 2016, I had Coach Trestle come here and speak to the student body because of his Maslin connection. And so that was a great experience for the kids to see somebody like President Trestle, who coached, won a national championship at Ohio State, to be here and understand that he was one of them, you know, as far as living in the community. He talked about living on 16th Street. Um, so when I came up with the book idea, I just knew I had to have him, you know, be part of it somehow because of his connection with the Maslin Tigers. Is each game a chapter? Or, uh, walk us through the structure a little bit. What was uh, sort well, of the, the creative... structure? You know, I kind of set it up, Ray. That's an interesting story. Um, there are so many stories that really didn't relate to actual games, so I broke it up this way. So I have like um, I have so many chapters um, in the first section, which is called um, it's called the uh, preseason, or it's the preseason. And there's stories in there of like how I became the coach, um, the Maslin mystique, um, the, the legend of Paul Brown Stadium, those kind of stories. And yeah. then the middle section, uh, it's the regular season games, things that happen during the regular season leading up to those games. Um, then we have a halftime section where those chapters, again, are like the preseason chapters where they could stand alone. Um, and then we have the second part of this book is, is all about the um, – the last part of the regular season, postseason has its own chapter. The McKinley Week has its own chapter because obviously there's so much going on with that. Yeah. And then the state championship has its own chapter because there's a lot of drama with that and some great comments from um, you know Coach Moore about that. And and the post game um, team meeting was very very uh, somber but uplifting as well. So um, there's 30 chapters. So. Uh, that's how it's put together. David Lee, I'm curious, did you, uh, if they'd won the 15th game, then the title is a slam dunk. Was there any thought of, boy, i got to come up with a different title now? Or is there, or, uh, when no, they did not a, win week number 15? Great, that's a great question, Ray, because we, you know, I thought the same thing, but my publisher, Scott Ryan, you know, they said, you know, it's still 15 for 15, Um because we didn't win that last game, but every year that's that's what the goal is to win 15 games, and it would have been a great way to to cap off this whole season. Obviously, to win a state championship that we've never won since the playoff system, but that's part of the conf- that's part of the drama yeah. that makes Maslin the program that it is. Because you know, most I mean, let's be let's be very conservative and say. Fifty percent of high school football teams are in conferences or leagues. So their goal is to win that conference and then win a regional championship and then win the state championship. Well, for Maslin, they're not. We're not in a conference. We're not in a league. Our goal is to win a state championship. Our goal. That's our goal. And to do that, you have to win fifteen games. Yeah. And then if we don't win that, that's that's part of that hero's journey of the Maslin high school football program, which is almost like. It's it's got a life of its own. It's got like a, a heart. It's got it breathes. It lives, and every year we go through that hero's journey, and then we become better at the at the end of it. But then it starts over again, and it's still got to be fifteen for fifteen. What did you learn, David Lee, about Maslin? The process of writing this book, the program, the community. A kid. What 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 just stands out to you as I would never know this about this town or this program, uh, were it not for the exercise of writing this book. Well, you know, it's 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 interesting because you know when you're looking outside and you look at this program and you look at this town and you say, you know, 
you know, a lot of people, myself included, when I was at Harding, it was like, you know, I hate Maslin. Didn't know why. <laughs> hated their arrogance. Hated what they stood for. But as you get older, and then with me being very, very fortunate to be, be inside, you realize that that arrogance really isn't intentional. It's, it's, it's part of what makes their community who they are. That's, it, it's almost like an obligation that everyone has to make sure that they uphold what has been established with the Maslin football program. And they also understand that with that success, comes the success of that city to a certain degree and it's it's a really they're really strongly intertwined and so looking at it from an inside coming from the outside and being inside now you realize that man that arrogance is really more of just something that they've lived with for generation after generation after generation and you can understand why it's 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 an arrogance of not intent, but just a part of how it's always been. David Lee Morgan, if our that guest. Makes sense. Yeah, it, it surely does. I, I'm curious. Scott Shook has written several good kind of history books of the Maslin Tigers, uh, and, and those are like must reads if you if you're a fan of Maslin, if you just want to understand this community, if you're living in California. Uh, the movie Go Tigers did a, a really good job. I think most of us would agree of, of capturing kind of the vibe, and that was within a city. Uh, within a season, you know the the ninety right. what eight team, the Ellery Morris team, and and uh, and certainly that gives you a good insight into this community, uh, what makes it tick. Sort of, uh, do you feel that your book is sort of like an extension or a parallel to that film or to anything that precedes it, or how is it different? Why do you think well, it's unique? Well, well, well. First off, I did speak with Ken. Um, I, I have a chapter about the film because I did speak with Ken Carlson and, and, um, you know, talked to him for a long time. He lives out in LA and Brentwood actually. And, um, uh, he talked about, um, you know, making the film and, and, and seeing, you know, he said he hadn't talked to Ellery in a long time and was happy to hear that he's doing well. But, um, it is different. I mean, it's different because on film, um, Ken captured us. Uh, he, he captured uh, in the film. You have to capture certain scenes um, that maybe you aren't able to develop more, like you're able to in a book. So you're not able to develop a story about Zion and and his emotions or what he was thinking over a longer period of time. Um, that that movie though gave me a lot of. It gave me a sense of what the community was all about um, before I started writing the book because I'd never seen the film, and it's it's everything that Maslin is. But I coached. I saw. I, I was in the locker room. I, I was, you know, in front of these kids every day. So the perspective was going to be a lot different. That just uh, that that was always in the back of my mind. You are in a unique position right now, David, um, David at Lee. Halftime. I've got to stop you here, David Lee. We are just flat out of time. We've got to do this again. You've been with us for forty-five minutes, and I feel like we've just scratched the surface. Yes, um, we have. We have, and I'm sorry if I got long. No, you, no, you, you did know, not. Just you did not. Story. You did not. We've got to do it again. And uh, and uh, fifteen for fifteen, the Mass and Tigers, the book. David Lee Morgan, its author. David Lee, have a great day. We'll do it again soon, my friend. We've got to do this. Uh, you've wetted okay, our Okay, sounds good. Thanks for having me, Ray. Appreciate it. God bless you, brother. There it is. Uh, David Lee Morgan. And that-